A typical NFL offense is composed of some of the best athletes in the world. No matter the position, these guys have their work cut out for them. The whole offense has to work together as a cohesive unit or else things can quickly fall apart. Things can also fall apart, however, when you have guys on your team that are equally as good at catching passes as they are at catching bodies. Without further ado, let's dive into the offensive edition of the NFL's All-Jail Team from 2000 to 2023. Our offensive captain is no other than Michael Vick, who takes having that dog in him to a completely different level. In 2002, Vick and several others started a dogfighting ring on his Virginia property, and the operation carried on for many years. The group went by the name of the Bad News Kennel, and their sole purpose was to breed pit bulls for competitive fighting purposes. The things that Michael Vick and others did to dogs were deplorable. They electrocuted them, hung them, beat them to death, and in some cases drowned them. Eventually, the federal government caught on to the Virginia-based operation, and in 2007, Vick was indicted for his involvement in the dogfighting ring. He pled guilty to his crimes in 2008 and spent 21 months in federal prison. Nowadays, Michael Vick works as an analyst and commentator for Fox Sports, where he primarily does the Fox NFL kickoff show. Our first running back to make the team is Ray Rice from the Baltimore Ravens. The three-time Pro Bowler and Super Bowl champion was making a name for himself as one of the best running backs of the past two decades, but everything fell apart when a video leaked to him knocking his girlfriend out cold in an elevator. The video quickly went viral after it was obtained by TMZ, and shortly after, he was released and indefinitely suspended by the Ravens. In March of 2014, Rice was indicted on a third-degree aggravated assault charge and faced a possible jail sentence of three to five years. Ultimately, Ray never went to trial because he agreed to an intervention program which required him to plead guilty in exchange for no conviction once the program was completed. Ironically, Ray Rice is now a motivational speaker who primarily speaks out against domestic violence. The second running back to make the team is Cecil Collins. Collins is not as big of a name as Ray Rice and that's mostly because he didn't make it past his rookie season before getting arrested. He was drafted in 1999 by the Miami Dolphins, and the team had high hopes for him after a standout career at LSU. After making it through most of the 2000 season, Collins was arrested for felony burglary after he broke into a Florida woman's home. He claimed that he only broke into her house because he wanted to watch her sleep, but unfortunately, that just made the situation worse for him. Hours after the break-in, Collins was arrested and later sentenced to 15 years in prison. He served a total of 13 years and was released in 2013. Our player representing the offensive line is Barrett Robbins. Robbins was a center who played with the Raiders for nine seasons. Despite his successful career in the NFL, he probably has the most extensive criminal history on the All-Jail team. His downfall started in 2003 when he missed the Raiders' Super Bowl after deciding to go to Tijuana, Mexico and party the weekend away. A couple years later, Robbins was arrested for battery on a security guard at a nightclub. Then, just one month later, he was charged with three counts of attempted murder after he bum-rushed three police officers responding to a burglary call. One of the officers shot Robbins twice, and he was still able to continue his attacks. Over the next decade, Barrett Robbins was arrested several more times. In fact, if you Google his name, you'll see he's been in and out of jail a few times since going downhill in the early 2000s. All things considered, it's extremely sad to see a former All-Pro go All-Jail. Next up we have our receivers and tight ends, two of whom I won't spend a lot of time on because you're probably familiar with them. To start we have Henry Ruggs III, a former Alabama standout who watched his career go down the drain in his second season. On November 2nd, 2021, Ruggs and his girlfriend took a 3am joyride in his Corvette after drinking on the Las Vegas Strip. Ruggs reached speeds of 156 miles per hour and unfortunately ended up crashing his car into a Toyota at roughly 120 miles per hour. The car on the receiving end of the crash burst into flames shortly after impact, and to make matters worse, a woman and her dog were trapped inside. Both the woman and her dog burned to death while Ruggs and his girlfriend survived with relatively minor injuries. The following day, Ruggs was released by the Raiders and made an appearance in court. In May of 2023, Ruggs pleaded guilty to felony DUI resulting in death and one count of misdemeanor vehicular manslaughter. He's currently serving a 3-10 to year sentence in prison. The second wide receiver to make the team is former journeyman Dante Stallworth. In March of 2009, Stallworth was driving drunk after a night out at a Miami Beach nightclub when he struck and killed a man trying to cross a road. A few weeks later, he was charged with a DUI resulting in manslaughter, and he surrendered himself to the police. Dante was truthful and cooperative throughout the entire investigation, so he was quickly released on a $200,000 bail. Despite killing a man while intoxicated, Stallworth accepted a plea deal that gave him only 30 days in county jail with 1,000 hours of community service and 8 years of probation. 
His license was permanently suspended in the state of Florida, and he agreed to a financial settlement with the family of the deceased. Believe it or not, this incident didn't end Dante Stallworth's career, as he was reinstated by the NFL in 2010 and went on to play four more seasons. Last but not least, we have Aaron Hernandez, a guy whose downfall was so crazy that several documentaries have already been made about it. As most people know, Hernandez was a standout tight end on the Patriots who contributed to several playoff runs throughout the Tom Brady era. Unfortunately, he was also known to have pretty bad character issues. Many former teammates described Hernandez as someone who always wanted to be the life of the party, but also as an outcast in the locker room. Despite being a hard worker on the football field, he always seemed to do his own thing off the field, even if it meant making bad decisions. By 2013, Patriots coach Bill Belichick was running out of patience with Aaron Hernandez, and they were prepared to release him from the team. Ultimately, they didn't have to because a couple months later he was indicted for the murder of Odin Lloyd. Two years later, he was found guilty and sentenced to life in prison. Truth be told, Hernandez's criminal history goes a lot deeper than the murder he was charged with. His violent character got him into several fights, and there's reasonable suspicion that he shot several other people throughout his career. While in prison, Hernandez would go on to kill himself in 2017, and unfortunately, a lot of the truth regarding his crimes will never be understood. That wraps up the offensive edition of the NFL's All-Jail team from 2000 to 2023. If you enjoyed this video, please remember to subscribe so you don't miss any future uploads. As always, thanks so much for watching. This has been Brad with DFS City, and we'll see you in the next one.